Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. It's time to let go of negative thinking, understand why you do what you do, and stop the self-sabotage with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel, your resident subconscious success mentor, helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. If you want to stop self-sabotaging your own success and let go of the stress, then you are in the right place, my friend. Make sure you download your free Stressed to Success guided meditation at bit.ly forward slash stress to success as my little gift to you just for being here. Please do subscribe, share and review. It really, really helps people that need to hear this message find us and I so appreciate it. In the show notes, you'll also find details of how you can work with me and where you can get your mitts on my meditations, products, printables, programs. You can find it through the link in my bio on Instagram, which is my favorite place to hang out. So please do come join me over there at I'm Fran Excel. Tag me in your takeaways, slide into my DMs. I'm here for it. So that's the formalities over my love. So let's jump to the content. How to deal with selfishness and lack of thought when it comes to friends and family was a question I was asked this week by a lovely listener. So I'll take on board what they have said and obviously make sure it's generic enough for everybody to take something from it. So I appreciate the question but it's important to try and consider all angles as always. It can feel really really exhausting when you feel unconsidered, unthought of, like people are taking advantage of you or expecting from you. I've definitely felt this throughout my life, as I'm sure most of us have at one point or another. And one thing I learned when starting to unpick it was how I wasn't actually communicating my needs and I also wasn't self-aware enough back then to know what was really going on for me and how much I was adding my own colour to the story, creating meaning and assumptions that weren't necessarily correct. Absolutely not saying that's what's been going on behind this specific question. This is just me talking about my own experience with this and what I learned in the process and found incredibly valuable and has served me very, very well over the years. So the first thing that's worth mentioning is when people get used to taking, they'll take. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're selfish. For example, if they're used to you being the one to organise things, it can be taken for granted and not even be thought about to organise something themselves because they just assume that you will. So the thought might not even cross their minds. Again, not saying this is right or wrong. This is where our conditioning comes in and understanding conditioning comes in. It's also where autopilot can take over. For the people pleasers among us, this is where you can easily slip into feeling incredibly taken advantage of. It would be great if people could just understand what we might be thinking or feeling without us saying so, but the reality is they simply don't. So first things first when it comes to dealing with selfish people, and this sounds obvious, but the vast majority of people do not do this, and that is don't take it personally. Of course, do your own analysis around this and figure out in your specific situation if you think it might be personal. Communicate what needs to be communicated. And if you come to that conclusion, asking yourself if that person deserves as much of you or your time in their life might be necessary. And it sounds harsh, but we all have our drains and radiators in our lives. The people that sap our energy and leave us feeling drained and depleted, and those that give us energy and make us feel good. And we can't always just cut people out of our lives willy-nilly, and it's certainly not always necessary, and sometimes can be savage. (laughs) There are a lot of steps before that point, right? However, I am a big fan of loving some people from a distance when you know that it is best for you. So something else to think about is, are you able to step into their shoes and into their behavior and see what's going on for them? Is there a potential valid reason for them behaving selfishly? Again, not right or wrong, 
Does it make sense? There are so, so many reasons that are often really acceptable when you take a step back and see it from their perspective. And a lot of selfish behavior could be conditioning or put down to assumption or lack of communication. It could be it also due to a lack of empathy. And when selfishness is due to a lack of empathy, it's really unlikely to change because they simply can't put themselves in your shoes and understand why the behavior is damaging for them to be able to change it. And this is something that you see a lot with narcissistic personality disorder. So it's always important to consider in any interaction that triggers you in any way. So asking yourself, what are you making it mean? What assumptions are you making in this situation? What is underlying? What is at the root of the discomfort or the trigger? What feelings are there for you? Can you name them? And then communication, communication, communication. I can't say it enough. There's so much that goes unsaid that could so easily be solved if it was talked talked about. We have to learn how to do that. And it is a skill that we can learn. It's certainly not something I used to have. Start small, dip your toe in the water. If it's relevant, use a mediator, couples or family therapist to help you have the conversations and help your nervous system learn that it's safe to do so. Yeah, A lot of it is about learning to be assertive and ask for what you want and what you need. And boundaries play into this hugely too. Being able to identify your own needs and being able to articulate them. It's a skill. And remembering your part in the interaction is important because we always have some responsibility. Please, 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 when I say these things, remember that responsibility isn't about blame. Like in the earlier example, when people get used to you being the person to organise, they often just expect you to continue doing it. Might not even consider it. Yeah, so your responsibility there is to be the one to communicate it. It's not about blame. But if you don't communicate what you'd prefer or how it would make you feel, then they can never know and therefore do any better. You know, and organization is one thing, is some people's skills and not others, right? So it's remembering to not project the way that we do things onto other people, the things that we find easy onto other people. And ask yourself if they're even aware of their behavior. If they really, really knew and understood how they'd affected you, how might they feel? And what might they do differently? And are you giving them that opportunity? Remember that the only person whose behavior you can ever control in any way is your own. All you can do is communicate your wants, needs, and boundaries, and then the rest is up to them. There is also such a thing as healthy selfishness, right? Are they simply trying to make sure that their own needs are met? Again, this is being able to step into their shoes. And the more you're able to meet your own needs, the more able and capable you are to look after others. It's the age old, put your own mask on first before trying to help others. You're better equipped when your own cup is full. I remember sometimes when someone might accuse another person of being selfish, it's simply due to their own unmet needs. It's not necessarily about what's wrong or right because everyone has a different map of the world that they're operating from. There's always another perspective to everything. It's not always convenient, but it is always worth looking at. And the bottom line leads back to communication. If you can communicate your needs and someone can't meet them, you have choices then, right? Until you do so, you don't. You're more than worthy of being treated how you treat others and looked after how you look after others. But sometimes people need a little nudge and help to see that. So if you got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and start changing things for yourself, then join the Positive Pants Toolkit app and community so you can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be and if you want my eyes and ears on your problems then I work with people one-on-one and through my programs you can find all the details to join the toolkit or book in a call in the show notes the link in my bio and instagram and on my website franexcel.com so stop waiting for if and when and choose to change things now because you can I'm here to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself and as always I hope you found this helpful And I'll see you next week. Bye.